Hello, hello my friends, long time. I posted two videos last week, but they one was December daily recap where I just really jumped into showing you that project and the other was a video I filmed back in July that I finally got around to editing for you. And I feel like I haven't said hello. I was away for a long time. I didn't intend to necessarily. I thought I would take um, a bit of a break when we were away in Utah. Uh, we were there, if you don't know, um, my uh, family has a, a, a second home there and we go as a family um, for the entire month of August and we have for the last while, last years, really, and it's just been wonderful. We had such a good time, oh my gosh, it was so wonderful. And it's just, there's just not as much time for me to set aside for working on content and that's really not my priority when I'm there anyway because it's total family time. Um, and I just, I just really stepped into that and let myself do that and I just kind of let go of the content. And I didn't really know it going into it. Like it didn't, wasn't my intention to take a long break like that. Um, but as it turns out, I really needed it. I really needed it and I had no idea. So sometimes you just have to do something to know that you need it. I don't know. There's <laughs> good life advice from Jen. Yes. Anyway, uh, I thought I'd come back with a QA and a because I like to do these seasonally. I haven't done one for summer yet. Summer's, there's only like a couple weeks technically left of summer um, until the fall. Is it the fall equinox? I think so. Um, you guys, I'm so disappointed though. I use Instagram. I've been using Instagram for the last few of these to do my questions on because I just I like the little sticker thing it makes it easy to navigate and it's just kind of fun and I have a really good interactive bunch of you on Instagram so it's, I feel like it's a good place for me to ask the question and I don't know if it's Instagram glitching I'm gonna assume it's that but it's just like a few questions that I'm just seeing over and over and over and over again and it's hiding all of the like actual questions and it's bothering me Anyway, it's bumming me out a bit that I can't see all the questions because I know there's more than I can see here for, other than the ones that are just repeated a million times. But this is my chance to film. I have to take it. So I'm just going to make the best of it and answer what I can. The top question I see is from my friend Nina. Thank you, Nina. She asked two funny questions. I did a thing, you guys, this past week. I ordered a minivan. I ordered a minivan. If you don't already know, Don got a Chrysler Pacifica. I can, for some reason, it's like a mental block that I can remember the name. Um, about a year ago, when his lease ended on his, he had like a sedan. He had driven a sedan for years and years and years. And the reason he got one mainly was because it was just the easiest thing for him to get in and out of, literally, with his physical issues, mainly his back and such. And he loves it. And I got a little jealous, to be honest. I absolutely love the car I'm driving now. It's basically a truck. I mean, I'm driving like a huge truck. It's totally unnecessary, but it was my dream car ever since I was like in high school. And I've driven it for three years. We lease our cars. That's just how we choose to do it. It makes sense for us financially and in the way that we like to kind of turn over our vehicles. I know it doesn't make sense for everybody. That's just what we do. Um, but, uh, my lease is up in like a couple months and I've been thinking about it all year. I've been like, should I get the minivan or should I stick with the dream car? I love my car, I love it. It's very expensive, so that's one thing. And it's not that it's not in the budget to keep up with, it's just the main thing for me is that it's a little less kid friendly than I want it to be. Like as a bigger car, you think it's nice and kid friendly. It's got the captain chairs in the second row. It's like a seven seater. Yeah, it's a seven seater. So it's got plenty of room and stuff, but it's just really big. It's high off the, off the ground. It's kind of hard for my, and like it's impossible for Donnie to climb into by himself, my 18 month old. My three year old can climb into it by herself, but it's, you know, I, I have to be there spotting her just to make sure because it's really high up off the ground. And the minivan is just so easy for the kids, and I want them to be able to get in and out by themselves. Um, you know, obviously, in a, you have to be careful with kids in a parking lot or whatever, but you know what I mean. It's just at home and stuff when they're climbing into the car, it's just nice to have them be able to do that by themselves. And it's just so roomy and practical. 
and a lot less expensive. It's like a third the price. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I did it. I ordered a minivan. Uh, and I um, texted my friends about it um, the other day. And <laughs> Nina said, Nina was calling me, uh, calling it the J Money minivan. So <laughs> that was a really long winded story for saying her question is the J Money minivan getting a name? I think it should be the J Money minivan. We decided that would be my rap name, J Money minivan. Anyway, it's a bit of an inside joke there. I know those are annoying to include in those things, so I'll move on. She also asked another question, um, a, more, a less um, funny one, a uh, more serious one. She says, how did you decide to start a channel? What's been the best lesson while building your brand? So back nine plus years ago, when I started my channel, I did so because I was in a personal rut. I was a housewife and very happy in that role, but I realized I had no direction. I had just never pushed myself into anything at all, really, um, aside from like at-home pursuits. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think, I mean, if that brings you joy and it, and it makes sense for you and your partner, then uh, by all means. But I realized that I'm the kind of person who um, thrives within structure and especially when I have a project and a purpose. Like I've always was a really good student because that's just how I am my best version of myself is when I have that kind of structure in my life. So I had started watching YouTube videos because I had broken out with adult acne for the first time ever in my life. I had gone off the pill because we wanted to start trying to have a baby and my face just went nuts and i had never worn makeup before and i was like i don't know how to put on makeup so i started watching youtube videos like the few months or a year even pre prior to that to me starting my own channel and i really enjoyed watching people on youtube be, and especially Elle fowler she was like really instrumental the reason why i started the channel because she was just so down to earth and relatable and i could tell it was her it wasn't like somebody teaching me something it was like a friend showing me something do you know what I mean? It was it was more of a personal connection than a um, like a how-to, and I just really enjoy that. And I thought to myself, this could be my project. So what do I like to do? I like to organize my house. So I guess I'll show how I organize my house on YouTube, and that can be my project. And it was one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, she also asked, what's been the best lesson while building your brand? And for me, over the years, it's been be true to you. You cannot please everybody. Um, I tried that for a very, very, very long time and it didn't work well for me. And over the past few years, I've just been kind of figuring it out. I'm still figuring it out, but um, definitely doing my own thing and not worrying so much about if it's the thing that is the right thing for anybody else. Uh, and that's much better it's much, much better to make content that you want to make genuinely. Like be really honest with yourself. Is this something I want to film a video about? Or is this something I think I should film a video about for X, Y, Z reasons that have nothing to do really with your like absolute fundamental desire, if that makes sense. And um, so that's definitely been the biggest lesson. I still, I don't consider myself a brand. I really, I know that's like, it's a thing now, right? This is a thing. Back nine years ago, this was not a thing and brand and calling yourself a brand was like the weirdest thing ever. I still feel really weird saying anything like that, but I acknowledge that that's what it's become. And it's been a really great, um, for so many people to be able to, you know, be self-employed and build their own empires and whatever. For me personally, I've just always approached it. Well, I do consider it to be my work because it is what I put that kind of time and effort into. Um, I balance it as well as I can with being a mom, a stay at home mom, which is to me my number one priority right now with my very little children. Um, but more than that, it's my passion. Um, so I don't really think of myself as a brand um, because it's just me sharing me and I don't think you can, I mean, I know people market that all the time, but I personally just don't think you can brand you and still be authentically you. 
I hope that doesn't come off wrong. I'm like listening to myself say this and I'm realizing it sounds like I might be saying, oh, well, this person says they're authentic, but they market themselves as, it's just how I feel for me. I don't feel that way for anybody else. It's just how I feel for me. I shouldn't say you, I should say me. I have a tendency to use the wrong pronouns. Um, but anyway, that was a really long-winded answer to those questions, so there we go. Um, let's see. Haley asks, what is the most powerful change in your life that you've made and why do you think? This is a great question. This is a really great question and it's deep and it's hard to answer on the fly, I think, but I'm gonna do my best. I've been thinking about this a lot lately and I think the best, the most powerful change, not necessarily the best, but the most powerful change I've made in my life, I'm still in the middle of making. And that is choosing me. Again, I know this is gonna come off sounding really something to some people. And I'm not trying to turn this into a woe is me or I'm a martyr or blah, 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 whatever. This is just my experience of myself and my life. Let's just disclaimer aside. I feel like I've always been the kind of person who's chosen other people whether that's just my perception of their opinions, feelings, actions, judgments. And I, I wanna emphasize my perception because I am filtering anybody, what, my experience of anybody else through my perception, right, lens. Um, so, I, it's just really hard to articulate. But anyway, I feel like I spent pretty much all of my life choosing other people because I thought if I could make others happy by molding myself into whatever version of me I felt fit the best into their expectations or needs, again, perceived needs and expectations, not necessarily ones that were like really specifically outlined to me by any given person, I felt that that was the highest um, level of like do good. Like that's how I would live my life to the best. And it's seriously only in the last five years, especially since becoming a mother, three and a, almost four years ago, well, three and a half years ago now, yeah, three and a half years ago, um, that that's really become much more apparent to me, that that is not really, A, sustainable, B, healthy, or C, the highest level of living my best life. Because I now recognize that choosing myself shows my children that they should choose themselves because you cannot make anybody else happy. It is impossible. Only you can make yourself happy. And I know this, and I've known this about myself for a long time, but for some reason I never applied it to other people. I thought I had to make other people happy by compromising, by bending, by molding, by reshaping myself on behalf of my perceptions of what other people, you know, fill in the blank. But that isn't, I don't believe that anymore. I'm still working around that and it's been a very slow and a very careful process and a very well thought out process. I'm, I, have, I don't tend to jump into things like that. I tend to be very calculated. I like to do a lot of observing and kind of inner research and soul searching and things like that and I have been really working on that a lot and I have made a lot of progress, a lot of progress, I think especially in the last year since having my second baby. Because at the end of the day, what I want for them is to feel happy and loved and safe and um, I understand through my life experience that that cannot happen unless it comes from within. And that means choosing, choosing you before all others. And then you can be really, really good 
for the people you care about. And I, and I don't mean like good as in like good versus bad. I mean, you can be there for them. If you feel supported and grounded and loved and held within yourself, and you have that confidence that comes with that, you can be really fully present for the other people in your life in a way that does impact them positively, in a way that you cannot be if you are constantly skipping over yourself in the name of someone else. Now that's not to say that you can't, you know, do good for other people and be altruistic and be compassionate and empath empathetic. And I honestly believe that that stuff really only happens when you choose you first. Um, so again, another long winded answer. I guess I don't need a lot of questions to answer. So it's okay that you, Instagram is glitching because I'm taking so long to answer each one. Anyway, I will, um, I will go on. I feel like I've answered a lot of these very many times but I will answer a few of them um, because I, like I said, I don't have that many questions to choose from. Will, uh, Tiff, Tiffy, Tiffy, that's cute. Will you ever go back to doing organization videos again? I, I've done a lot of purging videos this year. I know some people don't consider that organization videos, but to me that's a crucial part of organization right now in my life because I accumulated so much stuff in my 20s that I'm just still like weeding it out. Um, the, uh, the non-essentials, that's a funny thing to say. I'm weaning out the completely non-essentials. I'm still keeping a lot of non-essential non things. Um, but uh, the thing with me, I've said this before, is I don't organize just for the sake of organizing something. Once I implement a system that that is maintainable, then I know it's a good system because if I'm naturally um, drawn to keeping up with it, like if it ain't broke, why change it? I do share whenever I do a revamp of something, like I did, I shared in my mudroom not too long ago. Um, I shared a little bit more about my kitchen and all those sorts of things in my house. I mean, I do share when I update things. Um, so it's not that I'm not doing them anymore. I just had a slew of those videos in the beginning of my YouTube journey because I completely reorganized a bunch of spaces in my house. And I haven't felt the need to completely reorganize anything like that since, although the office, you guys, the office. What is your favorite thing to do when you get some alone time? Yoga, going outside for a walk, or I have been running a little bit for the last six weeks. I'm very excited, I'm taking it very slowly. Some sort of exercise, yoga, Pilates, some sort of activity. Um, other than that, I really enjoy memory keeping and editing videos for you guys. Charlotte asks, Great name, by the way. Is there anything you, anything from the daily vlog days you regret sharing? I would say no. I don't see the point. I don't see the point in regretting things like that. I don't think I made any grievous errors in what I shared because I did share authentically. Um, I did share more than I wanted to at the time. This is going back to the other question. I just doing things that, uh, for other people instead of myself. Um, I think I probably should have maybe filmed a little bit less um, to protect my heart a little bit more during a very vulnerable time in my life. Um, that's really the only thing I regret. I don't know if I even regret it because it's built, it's character building. <laughs> that sounds so awful. But do you know what I mean? It's like that's part of my life now. So here's my, my philosophy. It's happened already like fixating on something that's happened, especially something that happened so long ago, is complete waste of time and energy because there's absolutely nothing, nothing I can do to change that. So no, I don't, I don't regret things. I honestly, I don't think back to that stuff. I don't. <laughs> Once in a very, very blue moon, like very, very seldomly, I get reminded of something where I'm just kind of like, Oh boy. And then, I, and then I'm just like, meh, but that, that was a long time ago and I'm not going to settle on that. This has been a really helpful thing in managing anxiety. Um, I feel like I've gotten really good at not lingering in the past and just hovering in the future. Like those, not doing those things helps me a lot with staying present just helps me keep anxiety at bay. So 
I guess that's what I'm gonna say about that. Do you still have all your items in Utah? I think I, I, I think you mean all the clothes and stuff that we keep out there? Yeah, I mean, I have gotten rid of a bunch of stuff because it doesn't suit me, my style, or fit me well anymore. I mean, I've gotten rid of some things. But yeah, all that stuff's still there. How do you begin to tackle an overwhelming large organization project? I've talked about this before. Take it a little bits at a time. If you can section off something smaller, um, and that'll just give you some, you know, what's it, motivation. I find that accomplishing something small then gives me the motivation I need to accomplish something bigger uh, and keep going in that way. Any tips for someone who's terrible at organizing? I recommend, again, just picking a really small project. Something, a common area, for me that would be like a junk drawer, my nightstand, a desk drawer, or my handbag. Those would be the places I would start, or even your car, unless that's really overwhelmingly disorganized, then maybe don't start there. Start small, it'll give you confidence. What have you been reading lately? I actually put up an Instagram post about this. I finished a bunch of my summer stack. I did a really good job with it, um, and I've got a fall stack on my nightstand. I'm looking at it right now. Uh, the last book I read was City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert, and now I'm just about halfway through the audiobook. This summer I've gotten to a, a habit of reading the physical book and then after I'm done reading it, listening to it on audio when I'm out for my walk or on a jog or whatever. And I really enjoy that because I tend to be a very fast reader and skip over things sometimes because I just get excited. Um, so having the audio book after helps me kind of pick up the things I might have missed. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can head over to my Instagram if you want to see what's on my stack, on my um in my stack on my nightstand for fall. My battery's about to die, I better go get a new one. Okay, fresh battery. Also, I don't know if you guys notice, I always get asked if Winnie will be in the videos. She's just so still. She's taking a little snooze. Um, she's here. She's here. She kind of looks like the stuffed animal sitting next to her. Uh, but I often get asked about Winnie. We celebrated her 10th birthday in Utah. Are you 10? She's like, don't bug me, mommy. All right, I won't bug her. I won't bother, but she's there, you guys, she's there. Lots of questions about vlogging, always one of my most popular questions whenever I reach out for Q&A stuff. The desire is there, you guys, but again, as I mentioned earlier in the video, it's about finding balance, protecting my heart when I feel vulnerable, um, and also just kind of conflicted feelings about what to share, what I want to share about my family, I don't know, it's just, it's difficult. I feel really, really conflicted about vlogging with kids too, because they're so cute. And of course, as a parent, you're so proud and you want to share them and you think they're so cute. And but at the same time, you want to protect them. And there's just some real ugliness on the internet. And I don't want them to be tainted with that at, you know, because at my doing, like, you know, I don't know, it's difficult, it's difficult, but I will say that the desire to vlog is there, and I know people keep telling me, like, it's okay, just show yourself, we just want to see you, that's all you used to vlog before, was just you, and I don't know, I'm just, at the same time, I'm like, am I really that interesting, like, my kids are way more interesting, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, do you guys really, do you really want to see a video of just me? I feel like that's just so boring. I'm like the least exciting person ever. But, um, it's, it's on my mind, it's on my mind. Oh, lots of questions about the plant-based thing. You guys, I did promise you a one-year plant-based update. I, I had my one-year plant-based anniversary, is, is that an anniversary? Um, back in June. I'm still plant-based, by the way. Um, Again, this is something that I've actually, I was totally excited to film and then, I don't know you guys, something about sharing what you eat on the internet makes some people so self-righteous, so authoritarian and just mean, mean-spirited. And it's like, dude, this is just what I eat. Like, it's not a commentary on you or your what you do <laughs> like it's just what i do but yeah it's 
delicate ground to trod. So I would, I'm building up the, I'm like amping up the courage because I have made a few changes um, and it's just, I know some people will understand, I know some people won't understand and I guess that's just, that's just how it is with anything. That's anything anywhere, but especially on the internet. So you guys want to see, I, I let me know if you still want to see that and I will share an update, but honestly, I kind of don't want to share about what I eat on the internet ever again. I, like that would be like the end of sharing about what I eat on the internet <laughs> forever. <laughs> Cause it just, it's just like, it is not worth the aggravation is, you know, it's just not worth it. What is your favorite musical? Thank you, Eliza. Fun, uplifting question. Oh gosh. I know what my favorite musical movie is and that's White Christmas, obviously. My favorite, I think that is a musical. I've never seen it on the stage. My favorite musical. <sighs> that is tough. I can't, now I can't, I'm like blanking. <laughs> I'm having stage fright and I can't think of any musicals ever except for Oklahoma, which is not my favorite musical. I sing a lot of songs from Brigadoon, also not my favorite musical. A funny little thing happened on the way to the forum. I had the great fortune of seeing that show with my brother when Nathan Lane was in it on Broadway. This was a very long time ago. We used to go to New York all the time because my grandparents lived in Manhattan and my parents went to see another show and my brother took me to that. He's almost eight years older than me, so that makes sense. I was very young, but it was so good and I love the music from it. It's just a funny, silly show. Really, I love any Sondheim show. I'm a big Sondheim fan. Like I can sing almost any Sondheim song for you. I love Sondheim. A Little Night Music, oh, I love that one too. Um, great music in that. Anyway, that would be my answer for that. Oh, I haven't seen that show in so long. Lexi asks, do you do any more crafting projects other than December Daily? Love your videos. Thank you, Lexi. I love sharing them with you. I do Project Life, which is an annual, like a year round um, scrapbook. It's, it's called Pocket Style Memory Keeping, where you use, it's basically like what Allie Edwards does if you're, she talked about December Daily in this question. It's about, it's about using pockets for scrapbooking instead of traditional 12 by 12 layouts that are more um, crafted. You can do a bunch of crafting in pocket style memory keeping, but um, it's a little, I, feel, I find it a little bit more attainable. So I do weekly spreads in, I usually have two albums a year. I am super behind on that. I also do, I keep up with Allie's projects. I really like Allie Edwards. You guys know that I talk about her a lot. She's my memory keeping guru. She's the, she's the bomb.com. But I do her week in the life project. I follow along with day in the life with her, which I usually just put into my um, project life album. Although this year it's a separate album um, and travel albums. So those are the, I mean, basically memory keeping. Um, you know, in the past I got real into knitting. Um, I've been into jewelry making. I've been in. I've made back products for a little while. Like over the years, I've done different phases of things. This is my latest phase is memory keeping. And it's a, something I was really into in high school and college in my early 20s um, that I kind of just stepped away from for a long time. And then when I found Allie Edwards, I stepped right back in and haven't looked back. What is your DVC home resort? Bay Lake Towers at the Contemporary. Is that what it's called? I still can't remember, isn't that terrible? Judy asks, are you decorating for fall? If so, are you going to film it? Judy, I just don't know. I like haven't been in the mood to, I used to do so much seasonal decorating and you've been following me for a while, you know that. I just haven't been in the mood since having kids. And it's not even that like it's time consuming or I'm worried about them like getting into things. Like I don't care about any of that. If I really wanted to do something, I would take the time to do it. It's just, I just don't have that drive. I decorate for Christmas because that brings me a lot of joy, but even that I've pared down since my like old days. Um, and I do wanna like purge through all my decorations. That's another huge project. My um, storage room in the basement is a complete disaster. That looks like a hoarder's nest. Like seriously, it really does. Um, Shivy asks, dying to see your mudroom floor. Will you show it here or on YouTube? Yes, I will. I will show. 
I'll probably just show it here because I already did a mudroom video, um, but I have a new piece for my mudroom, like an organizational center that I want to hang when I have a minute and, and see how that works out for the family. So I'll probably do an update. Uh, but I love the, we put uh, the same vinyl that I had put in the master closet here. It's a vinyl floor that's meant to look like a gray wood and it's waterproof basically and it's just great. Um, we had the same floor installed in the mudroom and it looks awesome. Love burns brightest. I loved your username. How is motherhood different than you thought it would be? I have definitely answered this before so I'll just briefly retouch it on, upon it. Motherhood is more natural than I thought it would be. That sounds weird. It comes to me more naturally than I thought it would. It just, I thought, I thought, honestly, I, I thought I would struggle with it. And of course, everybody struggles with being a parent every day, multiple times a day, if not every other minute, because there's just always something, right? But I just mean, it just feels like second nature. And I didn't expect it to be, to feel so comfortable in it. Even, I mean, and I'm saying that, I'm not saying like, oh, it's a breeze, it's not. Uh, I'm saying that I feel like it's just my it's like a second skin it is my skin it's my skin like i my motherhood is my skin and i never it's a garment i thought i would have to put on over my skin i'm not like really pulling out the metaphors today you guys i know you're excited i don't know if I, i'm not doing this i'm not doing this any justice let's just say i feel i am a mom and i never thought i would I always thought I would feel like a mom, but I never thought I would be a mom. But I am. Do you really read your DMs? I'm so glad you asked this because I feel horribly guilty about my DMs. I try, you guys, but honestly, months go by where I really don't look. I look at the ones that I've already, like the way Instagram organizes them is that it'll just like when I go into the DM box or whatever, and it'll show me all the people I've already replied to at least once at some point, and it'll show me all their DMs. And there's usually so many of those that by the time I get through all of those, like to get now to go onto the next page to see all the ones from people I haven't answered before, it's just no time. And I know there are people probably with more children than I do and full-time jobs and like who are saving the world at the same time who manage to look at all their DMs I don't know how they do it. I just, it's not in my power. First of all, I just, I get overwhelmed easily by all of that. Um, most of the DMs are very positive and they're not all positive. So I have to be, again, a little bit protective of my heart. Also, I'm just very introverted and I, now as a mom, speaking of being a mom, I spend all day with other people, except for like little pockets of time when they're sleeping and I'm not. And I need that time to just be alone. And to me being, even just being on Instagram, let alone being like chatting with somebody in a DM, that's not being, that's not like alone recharging time. And if you're an introvert, you get that. And if you're not, I'm afraid you don't. Because I know this from other people who are not introverts who do not understand it all. And we've had conversations about that. And they're like, oh, really? Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to talk to somebody when your kids aren't around? I'm like, no. <laughs> but anyway, I feel horribly guilty about it because I want to connect with you guys and I want to I want to chat. It's just, I also need to find balance for myself in the day. So it's a constant thing that I, I think about. Um, what is your favorite Disney World hotel? Bay Lake Tower at the Contemporary. Um, I also really like the Beach Club Villas. We stayed there once with the family years ago, a few years ago, and I really enjoyed those. I love the beach club because you can just walk to Epcot. Uh, and it's my favorite place to stay if we're like really wanting to go to um, the food and wine festival because you can just walk to and from Epcot. But with little kids, we love Bay Lake Tower because it's literally seven minute walk from door to door to the Magic Kingdom. And it's right on the monorail so we can get to everything we really need to and not have to jump in the car a lot. And it's great. Oh, Kayla, it's my birthday today. Well, this was a few days ago now, but happy birthday. Happy birthday. Daniela. I'm gonna go with Daniela for the last one. 
I just love your channel so, so much. Thank you, Daniela. That's very sweet. How are you and Don doing balancing it all? Just as well as anybody else, I think. Balancing is really hard. Don is super, super busy with work right now and it's stressful and difficult. And so that is, you know, I can only imagine because I'm not in his exact shoes, but how difficult it is to go from being at work all day in that kind of environment and having to deal with lots of things and then coming home and having to put that aside and be present with your family. I mean, it's not easy, right? So that I can only, I can't speak for him, but I can only, you know, sympathize that that is a challenge. Um, on my end, it's I'm finding actually, I feel like I'm, I'm finding a good groove with balancing. This summer was a very family focused, heavy. Obviously I pulled back on my content a lot. Went from two videos a week to one video a week and then none at all for August. Um, and then some, and it just, that felt right to me. And so I shifted my priority towards family time because you know, the kids are home with me a lot and and they're little and I just don't want to miss my time with them. And now school has started and I have a little bit more wiggle room in my schedule. So I am leaning back into content a little bit more and I'm hoping to lean a little bit more into home upkeep and I want to work on my office and I want to, you know, at some point get to the crazy hoarder stuff, like hoarder status basement. It's like, it's like something out of a horror film. Um, you know, so there's, the, you gotta pick and choose and, and it's always a balancing act with kids, without kids, life, family, friends, work, health, all of it. Um, but honestly, I feel like I'm coming at it from a much more grounded place. You know, seven years of therapy will do that to a person and, um, help you I, I don't know, I just feel more grounded. And to me, that means that I feel less off balance, even though nothing's really truly balanced at any one given time. There might be like a one golden moment where you're just like, oh, oh, everything's falling into place. And then everything drops in a thousand directions and some things break and some things bounce and that's just life, you know? But for me, feeling like I have my feet firmly planted on the earth, in that I am moving towards choosing myself and honoring my self in a way that provides me with love and comfort and safety and confidence that helps me to be fully present for my children and my family and my loved ones. That to me is balance. That's the balance that I'm striving for. And I feel like I'm actively working towards it and doing my best and that's the best I can do and I am pretty darn proud of myself. Every day, you know, it's kind of like a whirlwind of emotions and thoughts and feelings and things that have happened and things that haven't happened and it's just that's life for anybody, right? Um, but through all of that kind of whirling around, I feel myself really settling in to myself and that feels really good it is not easy but it feels really really good and i'm gonna leave it there because this is a really long video and i'm very thirsty <laughs> okay you guys can you come say hello i know you're very comfortable but they love seeing oh my gosh snug as a bug she got a little wet on our walk this morning so she might look a little bedraggled but here's winnie He's like, oh great, my close up. Oh, I love this little girl so much. Can you believe she's 10? Oh, she's just a baby. Anyway, that's it for today. Okay, okay, I'll put you back. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me. I really enjoyed chatting with you. I missed this. I missed this a lot. I'm sorry if this is a super long video, but I really missed chatting with you. And I'm sorry that Instagram was annoying, but hopefully they'll resolve that issue. For next time but anyway i blab on forever for each question and i'm still blabbing on so honestly i only need like five questions and i'm good to go i will see you guys real soon lots of new stuff coming up 
let me know if you want to see the plant-based thing and I will film it for you even though I really <laughs> I just kind of want to put in I kind of want to seal that up so maybe I will film it I want there to be like an end of that chapter not an end of ch plant-based chapter I don't mean that just an end of sharing about what I'm eating on the internet so maybe I will do that okay I will see you soon thank you for watching and take good care